Previously, we created a script which only preprocessed the data. In the current tutorial, we will combine both preprocessing and model estimation into a single script using ubersubject.py. The first thing you need to do is create timing files, also known as onset times, which indicate when each trial occurred. Use a terminal to navigate to the directory containing all of your subjects. Then go to this GitHub page and either download the script or copy and paste the code into your terminal. Once you've done so, press Enter to run the code. After a few moments, timing files for both conditions will be created for each subject and placed in their corresponding func directory. Take a look by typing cat sub 08 func incongruent.1d. There will be two rows, one for each run, with the onset of each trial indicated in seconds. Let's start with a clean slate by navigating to the sub 08 directory and typing rm r subject underscore results. Then type ubersubject.py and press enter. First, fill in the fields like you did during pre processing, selecting the anatomical data set and the functional images. Now, let's look at the fields relevant to creating the model, beginning with stimulus timing files. Click on the Browse Stim button and select the files congruent.1d and incongruent.1d, located in the subway func directory. When you click OK, you'll see a table populated with the timing files you selected. In addition to showing the name of the timing file that you selected, there are three other columns named Label, Basis, and Type. Label is how the timing file will be referenced in the command that does the model fitting, whereas Basis and Type specify which basis function to apply to the timing files. The default basis function of GAM specifies that the onset times should be convolved with the canonical HRF, which is shaped like a gamma distribution. This basis function requires that only one parameter be estimated, namely the height of the HRF, which corresponds to the amount of neural activity in response to that condition. Symbolic GLTs specifies general linear tests for the beta weights estimated for the conditions above. Click on the Init with Examples button to show example syntax for setting up the tests. When you do, you will see two contrasts, i minus c and mean dot ci. Let's modify this table to set up the contrasts that we want. In the first row, change the label column to incongruent minus congruent. And in the symbolic GLT column, leave them as they are. Likewise, in the second row, specify a contrast label of congruent minus incongruent. And in the symbolic GLT field, type congruent, then a space, that's important, minus incongruent. No sign implies a contrast weight of positive 1, while a negative sign indicates a contrast weight of negative 1. Therefore, the line congruent negative incongruent means to weight the parameter estimate for the congruent condition with positive 1, and to weight the parameter estimate for the incongruent condition with negative 1, and then to take the difference between the two. We will look at these contrast estimates once the model has been estimated. For the extra regress options, change the number of jobs to 8, or whatever number of processing cores you want to use. Uncheck the Run Cluster Simulation box, since we'll not be reviewing that here. Then check the Execute 3D RemelFit option, as this will create a separate statistical data set that better accounts for temporal autocorrelation than the traditional 3D deconvolve approach. This will be discussed further in a video on group level analysis. Also, change the Extra Align options and the Extra TLRC options, just as we did in the pre-processing video. Now run the script by clicking on the same three buttons that we clicked to pre-process the data. Before pressing go, don't forget to make the same changes to the script as before, such as init xform after the auto tlrc command. In this script, the data will first be processed, and then a model will be estimated. The total processing time will be about 5 minutes. When the script finishes, 
navigate into the folder subawait subject results group.flanker sub subawait subawait.results. In addition to the pre-processed blocks you saw previously, you will now see statistical data sets. The one labeled stats.subawait has been analyzed using the traditional 3D deconvolved approach. The dataset stats subawait remel has accounted for variability in temporal autocorrelation. You will also see a few files beginning with an X, such as x.xmat.1d. These represent different parts of the design matrix. For example, you can view the design matrix by typing AIV x.jpg. The first three columns are the drift regressors, which will capture linear and quadratic trends and signal. The two columns in the middle are the task regressors, with dark bars indicating when a trial occurred. And the last six regressors are the motion parameters. Notice how the drift and motion regressors are modeled separately for each run, with time running from top to bottom instead of the traditional left to right. We are now ready to look at the contrast maps of our data. Type AFNI to open the GUI and select anat final sub await as the underlay image. For the overlay, select stats.sub08. You should see something like this. The most noticeable features of the now opened define overlay panel are the slider bar which allows you to threshold the images to only see values above a certain number and masks out everything else. There's also the ULay, OLay, and THR menus corresponding to the underlay, overlay, and threshold subbricks. Let's begin looking at the slider bar some more. If you move it up and down, you will see voxels either disappear or reappear. That's because we are thresholding, or removing, voxels that fall below the threshold number to the left of the bar. This number is based on the subric that is selected in the THR menu. In this case, the subric that was selected for us when we opened the viewer was volume number 2, the t-statistic map of the beta weights for the incongruent condition. As you move the slider, the number below the slider bar, p equals, changes as well. This will only show voxels in this case that pass a p-value threshold of 0.0271. Now change the OLAY subric to incongruent minus congruent COF and the THR subric to incongruent minus congruent TSTAT. Then set the uncorrected p-value threshold to 0.05 by right-clicking the p equals text and entering 0.05 and then pressing enter. Then click around the brain, observing where the statistics are positive and where they are negative. Where do you notice significant clusters of activated voxels? Are they where you would expect them to be based on the paper? Now that we've analyzed a single subject from start to finish, in the next video, we'll learn how to create a script to automate the same analysis for all of our subjects. Are you excited? I'm excited.